Okay, so um, now that recording started, we can get um, started with our introduction to program notifications, um, what exactly they are and how you might use them as you're configuring your tracker program. So our learning objectives for today are that we're going to describe what program notifications are. We're going to identify times when program notifications can be used. We will create a program reminder um, at both the program and program stage level. So we'll discuss a bit about why you might want to use one of them over the other. Um, and we'll understand how um, template messages populate when notifications are sent. Um, so how exactly are these um, template me messages actually uh, being filled in with data from across the enrollment or event? Um, and then how are they actually delivered to recipients? So we will also understand the different ways that types of recipients can be specified to receive notifications. So broadly, um, the definition of a program notification is that program notifications provide a way to create template message reminders, which are sent to users or entities for events and tracker programs. Uh, program notifications consist broadly of schedules, recipients, and a template message. So those are sort of the key components of a program notification to consider, right? Uh, the notifications can be configured both for the entire program or for a given stage, okay? So you can, for example, um, have a notif one notification that's sent at enrollment into a program, and you can have further levels of program notifications that are sent out um, once an event is completed. Um, or by other conditions through uh, program rules, which we can discuss a bit. So here is just one example, and we will um, trigger a uh, program notification like this uh, during the interactive section. But you can see here that um, this is a program notification that is delivered when a, um, a client is enrolled in the antenatal care program, right? And so you can see that this is not just a uh, generic um, SMS that's sent to all of the clients. But what's interesting is that this message is actually filled in with some, um, some information about the client and their enrollment, right? So you can see here that it includes the first and last name of the client, as well as the program that they've been enrolled in and the location where it happened as well, right? So program notifications are very useful to provide more um, detailed information uh, to a client or to a, any type of end user um, who might receive a message um, and not just um, sending out a bulk message to all the phone numbers that are in the system. Um, and finally, it can also include some um, nudging behavior, like please keep track of your visit dates, right? So you can incentivize types of uh, behavior, okay? So what are the two different types of program notifications? Well, they can be created at two different levels within the program. Um, as alluded to earlier, there is a program notification, which uses the parameters of an enrollment to determine when to send out a notification. For example, this can be a notification that's sent out when someone is enrolled in the program the first time, um, or when someone completes the program. So after all the stages have been entered and the end user has clicked complete, or it can also be sent X number of days after an enrollment to remind a, a client or a, a care provider or another manager that um, this enrollment has occurred. Right? So that's uh, very broadly some different examples of when you might use um, program notifications. Program stage notifications, however, are a little bit different because these use parameters within a program stage, 
right? So for example, um, when a program stage is completed, so say if there is like a, a disease outbreak and uh, the, the program stage about this outbreak was just uh, completed, then a message could be sent to um, the person in charge of managing outbreaks for this area. Um, or it can be sent X number of days before or after the due date for a program stage. So remember how you can schedule uh, program stages um, to occur into the future. So if that occurs, you could um, schedule a, a program notification to send out, say, um, a week before that uh, program stage is scheduled to occur, right? Another thing to think about with program stage notifications is that you could also use a data element value in the message as well. Um, so while your program notifications, you can use uh, tracked entity attributes like first and last name. With program stage notifications, you can use those, um, those tracked entity attributes like their first, last name, their date of birth, et cetera, in your message. But you can also use things like the, um, like the data element value, um, for example, uh, the date of their test result uh, when it arrives. So um, program, notific program notifications can also be triggered for a program or a program stage via a program rule. Um, and we don't have much um, time to go through uh, program notifications triggered by a program rule today. Um, but if you look in the program uh, rule actions of a program rule, you will see that there are also options to um, have an action for a program rule that is either send message or schedule message. Um, and so if we have time and there's interest from, um, from participants, then we can discuss that later today. So um, very broadly, um, we need to specify the recipients and the message type to configure a program notification, right? So we need to identify the types of people who should receive the message in the program and the medium in which this uh, program notification will be sent. So currently there are two different mediums to send program notifications in DHIS2. Those are with SMS or with email. And you need to set up an SMS gateway or a email client in order to deliver them through, through SMS or email. Um, so we won't really go into the, um, the configuration and setup for that. But again, I'll direct you to the user guide for more details on, on those um, specifications. Um, but anyway, the types of people who might receive the message in the program would be the tracked entity instance, right? So your client who has enrolled in the program, um, they could receive an SMS or an email. Um, if that has been entered for their record. You can also send it to an organization unit phone number. So this might be, um, this might be more about the, um, the organization unit contact um, or the person in charge of this, um, of this clinic that has reported this, uh, this, uh, this event occurring. It could also be to all users in the organization unit. So to say to, all care providers at the, um, at the local clinic that there's been a disease outbreak, for example. Um, and it can also go to a specific user group. So say that there is a, a person in charge of, uh, of registering births in the area um, and you have a birth notification program that's set up. So you could send a message for each new birth notification to the person that's in charge for creating birth certificates as one example and you would configure that through a user group, okay? So um, the very first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to do a short demo on the uh, demo instance. And you can all um, follow along with this here too. So if you go into tracker capture, again, we are on the 
demo instance here, right? Academy.demo.dhc2.org slash demo, right? And we go to the antenatal care program here, okay? Now, if we were to uh, register a new patient here, and I can enter this person's name, Daffy Duck. Um, and now I'm going to enter in a email address. A valid email address for this person in the demo system. Um, and the phone number can be anything else. Village, um, I don't know. Yeah. Now I'm going to, um, I'm sorry. I'm going to click save and continue, right? And so now I've enrolled a new patient. If I were to go into my email address, that I just sent this to. I can see I just received a program notification zero minutes ago. Dear Daffy Duck, you are now enrolled in antenatal care at Cardinal Hospital PHC. Please keep track of your dates, right? And so I would encourage you all in the next um, few minutes here before we get into the demo of um, how to build a program notification template to try this in the demo instance for yourselves, to create a new enrollment in the antenatal care program, again, register here, and enter in your email address that you would want to receive a reminder into. And then you can um, open it up in your, uh, in your email and you can find this automated message uh, that has been delivered, okay? So that's just as one example. Um, I'll give just a, a couple minutes for people to do that, and then I'll come back and we'll go into the, uh, the details of how to actually create a program notification. Okay. Just a reminder, everyone, this is in, the, in Moodle, if you want to follow along. Okay. There's a sec section on program notifications. Um, there's a learner's guide there. So this is exercise one. Um, if you pull that out, it'll have, if, if you've kind of weren't able to completely follow um, anything that Brian did, okay. But you're just registering a new person essentially and using your email, but you can follow along. There's other exercises there as well for this session. Um, so you can download that and, and review it there. Okay, so there's the... So we have the... So we have a, um, we also have an SMS gateway, as I said, set up on this server as well. So just to quickly uh, demonstrate how the SMS uh, program notifications can work as a sort of proof of concept, I will um, just quickly go to a, the antenatal care program of this instance, okay? And now I'm going to, again, uh, register a new patient. So let me just check really quickly that there is indeed a uh, program notification. Yep, a welcome SMS. Okay, so I am going to create a new patient here and I'll call this, um, and then I will give a birth date to this client. And I'm going to add in my phone number here and my email here. Okay. So at the same time, I also have a uh, my email set up here and I will also screen share um, my Android for you here. And so I will click save and continue here. 
Okay. And so you can see that I've received a, an SMS from DHIS2. Uh, welcome to the AMC program. And at the same time, I've also received a email from the same instance. Welcome to the Antenatal Care Program. Okay. So um, that's uh, the summary for this uh, SMS uh, type of program notification. Again, we won't go into how to set up an SMS gateway here, but um, the next step, and this is where um, you will also be, um, be doing this as part of your learner's guide, is to follow the same uh, example for setting up a program notification yourselves. <clears throat> so how do we actually go about setting up a program notification? So we're going to log in to these, um, the customized instance. Actually, first I will use the demo instance, sorry. First I will use the demo instance. And I'm going to create a new program notification step by step, okay? So I'm going to go to first here, program. Now under program management, I'm going to see select antenatal care. And you remember this part from when you configured your programs for the first time, right? Program details, enrollment details, attributes, program stages, access, and notifications. So today we're going to click on notifications. And here we can see that we actually have um, two different uh, types of the program notifications described earlier. We have program stage notifications and we have program notifications. So I'm just going to quickly delete this earlier one that we had. And then I'm going to recreate this same program notification again. Okay. So the first step is to click this plus icon here. And you can see it gives us the two options of program notification or program stage notification. I'll just zoom in so it's a bit more clear. Program notification or program stage notification. So because I want this message to be sent at the time of enrollment, I'm going to select program notification. Okay. And here it gives me a number of different um, a number of different screens, basically saying, what do I want to send? When do I want to send it? And to whom should I send it? Who to send it to, right? So I'm going to call this one, this uh, program notification, enrollment in ANC welcome message. Okay. And now the message template. The subject template is basically what's going to be used as the subject of your email if you were to send this as an email. So it would say, you are enrolled in antenatal care, or you could even actually make this enrolled in program name in organization name, okay? You can see that on the right here, we have a number of different template variables, right? So I just used program name and organization unit name. But there's also uh, the current date that can be used. You can also use any of the tracked entity attributes that have been created for this person as well. So we have the uh, date of birth, first name, last name, insurance number, et cetera. Okay. But in the message template, I'm going to actually, again, use some of these tracked entity instance attributes uh, as part of the template. So dear, first name, last name, right? This is how you address the client. You are now enrolled in, again, uh, go to programming at organization again. Please keep track of your visit dates. Okay. So essentially this template is 
uh, creating the, the frame for the message. And then all of these variables will be filled in um, while the message is being sent. Okay. So as the message is being sent, it's going to look for what the first name and last name of the client is, what the organization unit name of the enrollment is, and then it's going to deliver it um, with everything filled in. Okay. So you can sort of think of these as placeholders in the template. So after I've created this template, um, I'm going to say when to send it. It's important to note here that there are a number of different uh, triggers for sending your program notification. So um, day scheduled, for example, uh, will allow for specifying the number of days after enrollment or incident date that the message should be sent. Okay. Um, so for example, if I say enrollment date, then you should say this. Um, actually, this because I'm zoomed in here weirdly. Um, Uh, two days after a scheduled date, for example. Um, you can also have this be triggered by a program rule. And again, we can discuss in more detail about how to trigger them by program rule. Um, and you can also trigger by program completion. So this will um, send the reminder as soon as the enrollment is completed. But we're going to use program enrollment because we want this message to send as soon as our patient or our client are enrolled into the program. So the third uh, component to consider is who do I want to send this to? Right? And so now we have a number of different options as described earlier. Tracked entity instance, the organization unit contact, the uh, users at the organization unit, so that's the users that are, are assigned to the organization unit, uh, the user group, or the program attribute. Um, if a user group is uh, selected, then the uh, different user groups that are available in DHIS2 uh, would be available there, right? So I could say, like, send this to ANC staff, and I can say, just notify um, the users in the hierarchy. So just notify ANC users that are in the ANC staff user group that are actually um, underneath the organization unit that triggered this message. Right. Um, yeah. If I say organization unit contact, then this is um, defined uh, when you're creating organization units, what their number and email is for the organization unit contact. But for this one, I'm going to use program attribute because you remember that there is a program, uh, program attribute for the patient's email. So I'm going to select the uh, antenatal care email program attribute here, okay? And then the last thing I'm going to do is click done and save. Okay. So now I'm going to test this one out again to make sure it's still there. I'm going to go to clear cache first. Okay. And then I'm going to go to tracker caption. Um, another fun test. And we're going to say basic number and then okay. So now when I have my email open again, I'm just going to click save. And it says I have a new message. Dear, another fun test. You are now enrolled in anti-healthcare. Yeah. Okay. 
So now it's over to all of you to um, create a, a program notification in the config system for your ANC instance. So that's in this, um, in the, uh, where you have been creating your ANC, uh, your ANC programs. Okay, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, and now I'm going to go to the uh, tracker program again. Um, and so when I go click program and go back into Antonio Care and back to notifications and where we were earlier. Okay. So we can see, as mentioned before, that we have program stage notifications and program notifications. Right. So what we just created earlier in the in the demo instance were uh, program notifications. Right. Um, now, our next uh, step is doing program stage notifications. And remember, in the intro, we discussed that there are a couple differences, which we will see now, about what is a program stage notification and what is a program notification. So if I were to click Open, New, and say Program Stage Notification, we can see that there are um program stage here is selected instead of uh, uh just sending it for the program right so we have to select which program stage this notification will be sent for all right so for this one we're going to make it not amc registration on the first stage but the anc visit okay so I'm going to call this one um, ANC reminder visit in two days. Okay. So the purpose of this program stage notification is to send a reminder to our client two days before their scheduled ANC visit. Okay. So this one, um, we might do this as a, an SMS, just as a, a demonstration, um, but uh, so the template doesn't really, uh, the subject template doesn't really matter as much because the body of the message will be in the message template. However, I can just call this one antenatal care clinic, clinic visit in two days, All right? And now for the actual message template, um, you, mes you see here the different template variables. I have program name. I also have program stage name. I have days since or days until due date. I have current date. I have all of their uh, tracked entity attributes, first name, last name, date of birth, et cetera. And now in addition, I also have a number of data elements that are associated with the ANC visit as well. Now, we won't be using these for this um, particular type of program stage notification because uh, this one will be about a, a scheduled ANC visit. But it's still interesting to note that, say, if you were going to be sending this at the completion of an ANC visit, for example, you might say um, your BP at your last visit was, um, uh, was too high. It was like 190 over, two, over 150, something like that. And then uh, you could actually insert the values for the blood pressure or IPT dose given uh, into the message itself. All right. So for the message template, I'm going to say dear, first name, last name, first name, last name. You have 
an antenatal care visit and, and insert the organization unit. Uh, scheduled for due date. We look forward to your visit. Okay. So that is what we're actually going to send. Now, when to send it. Now we have some different options here for when to send. So we can send at program stage completion. That's when a stage is actually uh, clicked complete. We can do day scheduled uh, based on the due date, or we can do it by program rule, right? Again, won't get so much into these. Today, we will just discuss the due date option. And I'm going to say that I want to send this two days before the scheduled date. I'm trying to get rid of that zero. It doesn't look like it's going to move. Yeah, there we are. Two days before the scheduled date. All right. Oh, who do we send it to? Once again, we're going to send this to the um, program attribute and we'll send it to the client's phone number. If you see the notification recipient here, again, with program to stage notifications, we can use data element values as well now. So say for example, that um, the, the woman's uh, phone number was actually being recorded as a data element at the very first visit then you could send it to a data element instead, right? So I'm going to say this as the antenatal care phone number and click done. And now click save, all right? So um, unfortunately, it's not really possible to show this reminder being sent, right? Because this is um, a reminder for a visit that's upcoming in two days. But you might be thinking to yourself that this is a this reminder is not sent instantaneously, but this reminder will be sent okay two days before the visit. But what time will that message actually be sent? And so we have a way of saying when messages should be sent from DHIS2, when these scheduled messages rather should be sent from DHIS2. And that's using this scheduler app. All right. So I already have a, um, a job type scheduled here for, um, for sending program notifications, but I'm going to delete this and then we can walk through the steps of doing that together. All right. So you've just created program notifications. That's going to um, schedule a, uh, a reminder for women to attend their next antenatal care visit two days before the due date. So I'm going to click new job. I'm going to call this send program notifications. And I'm going to select my job type. So I'm not going to go into all of these other options here. A lot of these are for routine data administration purposes, put doing things like monitoring validation rules, uh, running predictors, um, a lot of these more advanced DHIS2 tasks that can be run routinely. But the one that I want to draw your attention to here is send program notifications, right? So, um, so program notifications job are basically going to see um, at this time every day, which messages are scheduled to be sent out and then deliver them to the appropriate um, email addresses or phone numbers with all of these uh, variables filled into our templates. All right. So you might be asking what a, uh, a cron expression is. Um, there's a lot of different ways to look at what a cron expression is, and there's different types for scheduling. But essentially, the, a cron expression is just a way to tell the server um, what time and how frequently your sending of uh, program notifications should occur, right? So it's uh, an encoded expression that might say, we want our messages to be sent um, every day at noon, right? 
that's a nice non-intrusive time to send uh, program notifications. You probably want to, wouldn't want to send uh, SMS messages at 3 a.m., for example, or at midnight, but every day at noon might be a good, um, a good time to send them. You can see that this is actually sending Monday through Friday. So I'm going to say make this Monday through Sunday. So um, there's a variety of different options for how to configure uh, cron expressions. Um, you can just uh, Google cron expressions if you're unfamiliar with them. Um, but essentially, this is just like um, Monday mid hour. And I might say, I actually want to send this at um, 13 hours or 15 hours every day to send it at 3 p.m., for example, um, Monday through Sunday. And there's actually an interpretation of this cron message um, helpfully displayed for you um, underneath here. All right. Um, so then we can click save. Oh. Failed to update, cron expression is invalid because I've probably changed something, okay? I'll say every day at noon and just keep it to that. Oh, it's, it might be because I just uh, deleted that one earlier. So I'm going to say, save there. Yep, okay, someone's already created a uh, program notification job in the demo system. Uh, please do this if you're going to follow along in the uh, config system. Um, that way there's no confusion about it. So um, importantly to note is that the program notifications will be sent for um, all programs and all notifications in your DHIS2 system. And they will be sent um, just once in that day, right? So if um, there's another program notifications operation that's run at 12, um, then all of them that are scheduled for today will be sent at 12 and nothing will be sent at um, one o'clock. This is also sometimes um, useful to think about the scheduling um, because say, for example, you've um, scheduled a message to be sent out on the current date. Um, like say, say, say you're uh, saying the message should be sent out at the end of the day today. Right. Well, then you have to define what's the appropriate time to do that because people might be updating their pro updating their uh, tracker programs even at like four or five p.m. Right. So you should make sure that you are sending out the program notifications at an appropriate time where data entry has been closed for the day, so that you're not losing anything else that day. All right. Um, unfortunately, this is also a, a universal configuration right now, so you can't specify, I want program notifications for the ANC program to be sent at noon, and I want my um, IDSR program program notifications to be sent out at 9 a.m. Unfortunately, right now it just works for all programs within your system. All right. Um, so that's about it for configuring the, the time that these that this um, should be sent. Um, I think we have might have some more um, exercises to, to look through in the uh, learner's guide now. Um, and one other thing that I did want to show before we take a quick break for the implementation uh, presentation after this is that um, say you wanted to know um, which messages have been sent out by your system. Um, if you were to use a, a SQL view, which I know we won't get into much, but these, um, these data are actually accessible through SQL view um, on the, the program uh, message table. So if you wanted to know how many messages have been sent out, um, check with your database administrator for accessing this table. Um, and then you can see that they are, you, it lists all the messages that have been sent out and whether it was uh, correctly sent or failed. So that might be useful for your monitoring and evaluation of um, SMS messages that have been sent out, for example, um, or emails that have been sent out. Okay. So um, that concludes today. Anything else that you wanted to add to this one, Shirji? Or, um, no, that's okay for now. I think some people had some questions about uh, just generally if we could send them the healthcare workers, for example, let them know there's overdue 
that were missing page. So I think you know, just reviewing the recipient types, different recipient types, you know, um, it will be a good idea. You'll be able to see, for example, you can send it to user groups instead of a specific tracked entity attribute. Uh, there's quite a few things you can do. Um, I think the other thing to keep in mind with, with all this notification stuff is, you know, how, how frequently are you sending it out, right? You don't want it to become kind of static, um, especially if you're sending it to healthcare staff, you know, just sending emails all the time for everyone registered or something like that, you know, then they're going to ignore it. And so you have to be really kind of targeted in terms of how you utilize this feature. Um, otherwise, it becomes overwhelming, both for the person, right? They don't want to receive a bunch of spam in their phone or their email, as well as, you know, anyone working with the system. You know, if they need to check something, it should be for a specific reason, not just, you know, someone's enrolled in your program and you have thousands of mothers or whatever, right? So, so you just have to be a bit careful how you utilize this feature, but it, you know, it does lend itself to a number of, of different use cases, yeah. Yeah, I was um, seeing in the chat as well, it, it's definitely inconvenient if you have um, uh, multiple time zones for your program and you're just configuring it to send out once. Um, same, just to be considered that this is based on the server time zone. So if it's being, your server is being hosted in another time zone, um, it can be important to, to think about. Um, and once again, can we can also review again the, um, the program uh, notification templates to see um, some of the options for sending things out to user groups, for example, or to um, or to organization and contacts, if that would be helpful. Well, Brian, I have one question here. If you can just repeat how you populate the template with uh, some of the attribute information. Maybe yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and I can also um, be sure to zoom in a bit more this time. Um, so I will resume my share here and I'll go to program and to Neo care notifications. This last one that we, um, we just had for say enrollment in the ANC welcome message. So I move this. See that there's a, a list of template variables here, right? And um, each of these, um, if you click on it, will populate with where your cursor was in the message template. So if I click current date, I will show current date there. If I scroll down to Antonio Care, which is the, the name of the program first name, and then I click first name, then it's going to show this uh, attribute here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that over here. This is just the, um, the UID for or the, um, the first name uh, tracked entity attribute. So it's, um, it's nothing fancy really, but it's, it's just to, um, this is a helper to direct you to the right UID for your um, tracked entity attribute. So first name, last name, you are now enrolled in the program, okay? and save that there. Um, um, maybe I can um, go to once again, um, who to send this to. Um, so I can say program attribute, user group, users at organization unit, uh, tracked entity instance. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say organization unit contact. Um, if you go to the organization units, then you should see a contact listed for a phone number or for email, um, usually the person in charge. Um, if I were to say a user group, again, I can select ANC staff. And if I say users in hierarchy, then that means um, just the people at the clinic that triggered this 
notification or below. Um, so maybe like a, a high risk facility that's um, underneath the, the clinic in the org unit hierarchy. Or maybe I want this to be a notification to the district level that you know we have a a case of um, a case of rabies or something like that that needs to be looked into or some other highly contagious disease, um, and then you would say notify a parent organization unit only and only like the um, um, let's see here uh, area managers right. So you can send this up or send this down the org unit hierarchy for a specific user group if you so chose. Um, or again, you can send this to all users uh, at an organization unit. The organization unit here, if you were to go to say a hospital, then you can see that there is a email and phone number attribute just for this uh, just for this hospital, right? So if I were to send a an email based program notification to the hospital, then it would go to uh, this email address here. right? Um, I think um, maybe we have a bit more time just in the last um, few minutes here to also go over the program rule very, very briefly for sending that up, for sending out a message. Um, so let's say, for example, in the uh, antenatal care program, I want a message not to go out to um, to all women that are enrolled, but um, only the women that are um, below 16 weeks gestational age um, and that have agreed to receive an SMS, right? Um, then I can do a condition here for what their gestational age should be. Say it's, it's over 16. And then in the program rule actions here, if you open this up, you can see that there's options for schedule or send message. So if I say schedule message, then that would be, I might want to um, add another, um, another four days from the current date or a number of days from the, um, from the due date for the next message. Um, or based at um, when she turns 16 weeks gestational age, for example, or I can just send a message immediately. And then you see here in the drop down, it says which one of these um, templates uh, do you want to use for this message? Um, and so generally, you would select the one that you've said in the template, um, trigger this one on program rule. Um, and so this would only be sent the or this would only be sent or scheduled the the first time that the program rule evaluates to true, right? So there's a number of different ways in which you can um, schedule program notifications with a program rule. Um, it it opens up a lot of possibilities, so we won't go into it in so much detail now. But just just to say, if if you wanted to explore this a bit more. Just go to program rule actions and look for schedule or send message. Okay. Any more questions here? Okay, should we uh, take a quick break here, Sharjeet, before the next uh, presentation?